Hey there on YouTube land and today we are going to look at what else? Screen Factory because I love those guys and uh, what I decided to do today it was a different type of collection video it's something that I've never done before I've never done an A to Z video so I took the time to put them in order we're going to talk about all of them this may be a long video I've had some frame rate dropping issues on this so this may hiccup a couple times and you may see me coming back because 15-20 minutes in frame rate the frame rate drops, it stops the video, I'll be restarting it. I'm not going to be starting it over again. I'm just going to be going from where I left off. Hopefully there won't be any like mess ups along the way. So let's give this a try. Let's hope this works. You know this is going to happen because, you know, I'm two payments away from completely paying off this Mac. So, of course, it's going to drop frames now. That's that's the way it goes. But, uh, again, fantastic stuff, fantastic computer. But let's go into this. Let's go into the Screen Factories and... Uh, from A to Z. First off, we have the Amdeville Horror Trilogy. This is a, an incredible set. I no longer have a 3D TV. I've got a, a 4K TV. And I'll be honest with you, I'll be completely up and already honest with you, I love my 4K TV. I trade it in for a 3D in a second because I do like the 3D. I do like the aspect. Kind of gimmicky. I do have some 3D movies. 4K, great quality amazing picture quality but do I really need my TV to be 4k as compared to 3d I use 3d more than we use 4k at this point down the road you never know then I'll have 4k 3d but right on but for right now yeah but anyway big screen which I love <clears throat> and the horror trilogy so let's look into these there's three movies in the set each got their own box got some really great cases we have uh Dan the horror I love this here cover for God's sakes get out it is just amazing. James Brolin was really good in this movie. Ron Reynolds was in the remake. And uh, Ron Reynolds, is, is he's a good actor. Uh, did he have the chops to do the way James Brolin did it? He took a different spin on it. I think he did a good job. I'll give him credit. But I just didn't have it. Uh, Margot Kidder, of course. And, uh, oh my God. Steiger? Rod Steiger, right? Yeah, Rod Steiger. Uh, just some great, great stuff. It's, it's not... Back in the day, it was one of those things that you thought was real type of thing. And a lot of people were like, oh my god, this happened. And uh, then all the stuff came out about the family. And uh, how he like said, hey, let's write this story. Drink some bottles of wine. And made the end of a horror. Very popular, popular book. Uh, next up is the prequel one, actually. And this is my favorite of them. This one is done, actually, by an Italian director. And uh, just really good. And it has that Italian vibe to it. It's more creepier. It's kind of eerie. It's got like the incest aspect to it. Uh, there's just, like, Burt Young from Rocky fame. He's in this one. Uh, just some really great stuff. Uh, just a bit of eeriness to it. A lot of atmosphere. Italian films have a lot of atmosphere. And this one here, although American, it is made by an Italian director. And it really does, like, it's drenched in, like, that kind of creepy, cool atmosphere that you can only get in Italian stuff. That is Anvil 2, The Possession. I just love this one here. And I love how the elves, I love these, like, beside there. This one puts, like, you know, a little like phrase on it, like sentence. This one puts like a paragraph. It really does. For God's sakes, get out as opposed to the night of February 5th, 1976, George and Kathleen Lutz and their three children fled their home in Anvil, New York. They got out alive. Their living nightmares shocked audiences around the world in the Anvil horror. But before them, another family lived in this house and were caught by the original evil. They weren't so lucky. This is their story. Jesus, man. <laughs> I mean, come on. Let this be like, say it at the beginning of your movie. Okay, it's a poster. <clears throat> uh, taking no literate like aspect to the poster at all because this film is the uh, antithesis of a literate film. It is Amityville 3D. It was very much done for the gimmick. Uh, I did see it in, in the theater when I was a kid. Uh, I loved it because I loved Lloyd Laughlin. And uh, it was just fun. To Roy J Robert Joy is in this, of course. And Robert Joy, who you probably know from CSI New York. Uh, he, I know him basically because he's an Atlantic Canadian actor. And he's a really good one. Um, Anvil 3D, uh, not the best movie, but uh, overall, it's a great set. And the cool thing is that they put a crap load of features on part two. Part two has kind of been the most maligned one, the more people, one that people like the most, but people don't talk about the most. A lot of features, a lot of greatness. Anvil Trilogy, if you don't have it, it's a great set to have. I know a lot of people go out and grab the other sets, but uh, this is a really great set. Next up is one that people don't talk about enough. i got to agree with Toddy Wallace on this one. People don't mention this one enough because it is a really, really good movie. And the movie is Assault on Precinct 13. It's kind of like, um, it's an action movie. It's kind of a 
crime movie. It's kind of, it's a it's a modern day western type of thing. An early John Carpenter film. Uh, just really good. The soundtrack to this is is awesome. The music is amazing. This film got some great casting in this one. Uh, if you've never seen this one here, really, really, you should check it out. I, Assault of Precinct 13 was one of the later Scream Factories I got, and uh, I was really glad when I did. I love the, art, the artwork that they used for the movie. And uh, this is one of the ones where I wasn't sure. You know, I'm going to get this. I love the inside. This is incredible. Uh, if, if I was going to get it, and I was like, you know, why am I not getting Assault of Precinct 13? I love the movie originally, but I just kept not getting it and not getting it. And when I got it, I was like, I'm so glad I got this movie. Fantastic film, an action uh, movie. There's a remake. It's not as good, not half as good. So if you're thinking that's going to be the exact same thing, not really. It's an okay remake, but it's not. It doesn't capture the. Uh, it doesn't capture the uh, the strength in the, of this one. This one really does. Next up is double feature, Bad Dreams, and uh, of course Visiting Hours, and. Uh, Bad Dreams, of course, as Jennifer Rubin. I mentioned it last night. And uh, just a fantastic little film. Jennifer Rubin, Richard Lynch. Of course, we got uh, Shatner, Pearl, uh, Grant, and, uh, of course, Ironside in uh, Visiting Hours. Great little film. I won't mention, spend too much time on this one because I already spoke about it. Bad Dreams is about a, uh, a girl that escaped from a cult that was uh, basically kind of a Jonestown type of cult where they were like kind of... They were basically... She doesn't drink the Kool-Aid. She's the one that doesn't drink the Kool-Aid. There's a, She gets away from the cult, but she starts seeing the cult leader. Um, they're kind of a ghostly apparition of the cult leader all over the place and uh, people are, are turning up dead and she's kind of wondering is the cult leader coming back from beyond did, did the cult actually have some kind of like validity and he's coming back to get her but but uh <clears throat> just uh you gotta watch to find out but it's really cool uh, Visiting Hours is about this uh, misogynistic killer played by Michael Ironside he gets uh <clears throat> he attacks women and he basically gets caught out on the air and uh, no, I'm not sure if he gets caught out so much as like domestic violence as it gets caught out and he gets like he obsesses on this uh, here uh, reporter and uh, goes after her and he even and it goes after in, in the hospital it's like one of those hospital horror movies it's been a long time since I've watched it now but really great film I got this one also on DVD as well under the uh, Shout Factory label but this had extra features on it so I need to have it Black Hill Scream, Black to Scream. Those uh, two are just uh, favorites of mine. I like uh, uh, William. What was it? William. Oh, I am totally blanking on all this stuff. William Marshall, right? William Marshall. Yeah, William Marshall plays the role in Black as Black Killer. Uh, again, Gordon Pinson, my man. Uh, Scream, Black to Scream has a. I think it's Lawson in it, and uh, just a really, really good film. It's got Pam Greer as well, and of course Pam Greer is sexy because Pam Greer is sexy in everything. She's just. One very very attractive lady. Very cool, like vampire films, like black exploitation vampire films, and it's kind of ridiculous in a way that like the films are fantastic. The acting is great, but you've got a guy going around dressed up in 18th century garb, modern day times at the time, modern day 70s anyway times, and nobody's blinking an eye. They're like, oh, there's somebody killing people around. They think they're a vampire. Could it be the guy? Could it possibly be the guy going around with the cape? And and looking all aristocratic and dracula like, hmm, yeah, okay, it's him. Uh, next up is the Beast Within. Beast Within is a fun little film. It's not so much a were film. It's kind of a monster film. It was done by uh, Philip Mora, and if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because Philip Mora directed Howling Two and Howling Three. Uh, yeah, we're not going to hold that against him because Howling Two was hilariously fun. So with Danny and Christopher Lee, you gotta love that movie. It's just some, got some fantastic stuff in it, and. Uh, Howling 3, it's a movie, and I've watched it, and I own it, and uh, I would buy it on Blu-ray if Scream Factory put it in. Why? It's, it's really bad, and I really like really bad films, and that's one of them. <clears throat> but he did this one, The Beast Within, and surprisingly, you know what? It's, it's pretty good. Um, pacing, a little on the slower side, even for a 90-minute film, but I did find it uh, good. There's a kind of disturbing scene at the beginning of the film for some people, uh, but that's how he got made. That's how this The Beast Within comes about. Uh... I thought it was fun. I enjoyed the movie. Definitely a cool one. Underrated Body Bags. Fantastic little film. This was supposed to be the pilot for a TV series. It was going to go on, like I think it was like Showcase or something like that. And anyway, or Showtime. But uh, he just did three. Like It's three stories. They're very solid stories. Very cool. Very like 
excellent. Mark Hamill does a great job in third story. Stacey Keach is very hilarious in, in the story that he does, and it's just really funny. And the first story as well got a lot of cool like uh, director cameos, uh, throwbacks to the movie Halloween, Haddonfield's mentioned. Uh, it's just some really great stuff. And if you haven't seen Body Bags, you should really check it out. It's a great one. It's got some great features on there as well. It's got commentary on every one of the segments with uh, different people. So you got a commentary with John Carpenter and Robert Carradine in the gas station. You got an auto commentary with John Carpenter and Stacey Keach on here. You got a commentary with producer Sandy King and Dustin Beam on I. Kind of wish that you'd have uh, Mark Hamill for that commentary. One of the big movies in 1981. 1981 is considered one of the banner years of horror. If you're collecting horror, you're a big horror fanatic, then there's certain years that like just ring out. And 1981 is considered that golden year of like horror, that like modern, like not modern wave, I guess the, the new golden age of horror. The whole, the slasher was king. Horror movies are coming out like crazy. And this one here, The Burning, was one of them. A great film, fantastic film. It came out at the same time that Friday 13th Part 2 came out. Around the same time, I think, that Mad Men came out. Both of them had very, very similar aspects to them. Of course, the, Tom Savini had done Friday 13th. He was asked to come back for Friday 13th Part 2. He didn't do it. I think Carl, Carl Fullerton came back for Part 2, came on for Part 2. So, uh, the, he, but uh, Tom Savini saw this one, The Burning, and he went and he did the special effects for this, and it is amazing. It's got great special effects. It has some great, great, great people in it. you got to check it. It's a slasher film. There's some really cool scenes. Cropsy makeup's really good. The uh, slicing out the fingers, epic. Uh, it just has some cast is good, likable actors, uh, basically because they picked a lot of actors that they casted well. Man, Jason Alexander, Holly Hunter, just some fantastic actors. Fisher Stevens. Next up is Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. Uh, surprisingly, I guess they maybe they didn't have the rights, but they didn't do the original Candyman, but they did get the rights to the sequel, uh, Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. And I know this is like a, kind of a much maligned one, uh, but you know, it's not Candyman 3. Uh, and I do like Candyman for Out to the Flesh. I do find this a fun film. It's one of those that I really enjoy. There's an epicness to the uh, to the first film. There's like an urban legend type of thing to it. Uh, this one is a sequel. And it, it kind of explains it more. But I did like it. I did like the way that it fleshed it out. I was never bored with Candyman for Out to the Flesh. Actually, this is a really good one. they got some great things on here. Some interviews with Tom, Tony Todd and Veronica Cartwright. A great cast. Uh, I think it was a, it was a definitely worthy follow-up. A worthy successor to the, to the original Candyman film. It may not be Candyman, but it's the next best thing, and I really, really like it. <clears throat> next up is Cat People. I was in love as a, as a young man with Natasha Kinski. I thought she was one of the most beautiful women that I've ever seen. And uh, as far as movies and stuff go with TV, it's today. There was, uh, there's an actress. Uh, God, what's her name? Alessandra Dodero. I think that's, I hope I got the name right. Anyway, she was in Texas Chainsaw, True Crime, all that stuff. That's about as close as we've gotten, to, for me, anyway, uh, to the perfection that Natasha Kinski was back then. <clears throat> I know people say Angelina Jolie and blah, 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 and stuff like that, but no. Uh, Natasha Kinski, she was just the girl for me back then. She was she was gorgeous. She had like beautiful eyes. Uh, she had that, she, of course, she was foreign, which uh, maybe that's why I, when I chose the perfect person for me when I, I ended up. Marrying a Moroccan. <clears throat> That's it. Because uh, the, uh, that whole foreign aspect. Um, foreigners, they get me, don't they? Uh, <laughs> Cat People, just an incredible film. You, you've got you've got to see it. It's amazing. Malcolm McDowell does a great job in this. Again, with the creepiness and the incest and just some very, very evocative scenes. Really great stuff. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. Really great film. Uh, just uh, amazing stuff. Of course, my other big crush at that time was uh, the actress Annette O'Toole who would play uh, Lana Lang um, in, in the Superman films and would go on and play Superman's mom in the series Smallville and she has a nude scene here so yes Aaron loved that Natasha Kinski and Annette O'Toole both have nude scenes in this film this is gold to teenage Aaron next up is a modern day one and it is Cockneys vs. Zombies I did love this film it was really fun the first time I saw this I was really really sick I was watching it with my better half, we were like basically lying down. I conked out. She finished it. She loved the movie. And uh, so I went back and watched it again afterwards to actually sit down and actually really watch it. I knew that I wanted to own it then. This was a, probably the first of the uh, Screen Factory modern day ones that I said, okay, they're worth owning. Some of the modern ones are really worth owning. This is a really fun film. If you haven't seen it, it's really funny. It's kind of like got the Shaun of the Dead type of feel. It's not like Shaun of the Dead, but I guess in the comedy way, you get that. Michelle Ryan is in this, who uh, was in, uh, she was in Doctor Who. And she was in the Bionic Woman reboot that didn't do very well. And uh, 
I think, I'm pretty sure she was in other EastEnders or one of those shows. She was in like a soap opera. That's how she got her start. Anyway, I really like her in this. Honor Black ones in this, of course. Great film. One that I talk about a lot on here is Crawl Space. Crawl Space is this really quirky, weird thing because they've got a really queer, blah, 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 quirky, new tongue, quirky, weird guy for the film. We have here Klaus Kinski. And it's hard to believe that this guy here sired Natasha Kinski. I mean, that's really amazing. Her mother must be gorgeous because what the hell? This is her dad. Uh, he is an amazing actor. He just is so freaky and creepy and cool. Uh, Klaus Kinski just is made for these type of movies. And I think he was made to do this film. Uh, Crawl Space, he plays this. He owns uh, an apartment. He's the landlord. He owns his apartment building. He's like spying on his... Uh, through a crawl space on all these like female neighbors. It only gets like good looking females. This is like, think of Sliver without the cameras. If you've ever read the book, the uh, Shag the movie, the R11 book uh, Sliver. Uh, the, good book, actually, I read it. Um, and uh, yeah, and so he's like this, was his father? Was his father? He was, something, he was a Nazi or something like that. So he keeps like spying and like killing people and going then playing Russian roulette. It's really weird, but you really got to see it because you'll be hypnotized to the screen. It's just so good. It's such a great cast, too. Uh, Telia Balsam is in this, and uh, I'm pretty sure, is he in it? Uh, that we, yeah, there's a few other actors. There's an actor in this. I can't remember his name right now. Like, I'm not sure if it's Craig Watson or something like that, but uh, that's kind of a role in this. I know that uh, Pino Donaggio does the does the score, and he does some amazing scores. So um, definitely check it, check it out. If you ever saw the movie uh, Dress to Kill, or uh, blow out those movies. Uh, he did the scores for those films. Next up is a really cool action film. This is the old school action film. No CGI. Back in the days when explosions had to be made to explode. So actors walked a little bit faster when those explosions were going on. Because boom, your face could get hurt. Dark Angel. Originally under the title uh, called I Come in Peace. That's what I saw it as in the theater when I was uh, when I was younger. And a uh, really fun film. Uh, Dolph Lundgren takes on basically an alien drug lord who wants to bring a bunch of other aliens down to uh to there and if even one more alien comes down they're going to be unstoppable this is how powerful these aliens are he had his balls to the walls action all the way throughout it's fun it's cool it's got great acting brian ben ben as the uh as as a, as, a, as a, kind of like the comedic file does an incredible job this is way more fun than i even remembered it being Picked this one up. This is a very cheap buy. I'm so glad when I picked up. Got it. Amazing stuff. The Dark Half. You know, it's one of those George Romero movies that's actually not a zombie film. And uh, I like George Romero, you know, working on under the Stephen King story. And I'm a big fan of The Dark Half. Uh, I thought Timothy Hutton did a great job in it. I know a lot of people kind of give it crap, but uh, I thought it was a fun film. Check it out. Great features. I think it's got like a 45 minute making of it. Doesn't that 45 minute making of it? She's not, she totally doesn't hear me at all. You know, this one here, it's got like a 45 minute making of right? Dark half. That'll be a very long, like beyond. We watched it, the feature on it. Uh, sparrows are flying. Again. Next up is a, kind of a one. It's a superhero film, a very dark superhero film that was done to uh, by Sam Raimi. Pretty much this is his, uh, this is his resume for making uh, Spider-Man. Darkman, just really good, and honestly, better than Spider-Man films. In my opinion, better than the Spider-Man films. Liam Neeson uh, kicking ass for the first time. Actually, this is where Liam Neeson originally kicked butt at. These Darkman films are incredible. Larry Drake is the bad guy, just an amazing job. Um, Francis McDormand as the uh, as the sex symbol. You would not see that later on. Francis McDormand did start out as kind of like a more of a sex symbol, like film, like femme fatale type of girl, and. Uh, which she's kind of in this one. I think she was in another film, in a Coen Brothers film as well. But she would later go on to be like, uh, get more mother motherly roles, I guess you could say. But uh, great, great film. I know this is Todd's favorite. Uh, Toddy Wallace did a, did a basically a, a tag video that came from Manny Repose. I just found Manny Repose's channel, by the way. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Really good stuff. Uh, I just finished watching his uh, his tag video. And there's Daniel's started watching some other stuff and I said you know I'm going to do this video here right now so you commanding you kind of inspired me to do this so thanks for that uh, George Romero's Day of the Dead 
just such an amazing film. Incredible. This is my favorite of the dead films. Uh, by, by far. I mean, it's, uh, it's cool. I like the militaristic aspect of it. I like the, kind of like the way they go with the film. It's very different. It's darker than the other uh, dead films. Uh, Don the Day, of course, has more is, is satirical. It's got more of a humor aspect to it. This one still has humor. I just, uh, I just really love the the way this film was done, the way the cast was. It just everything came together just perfectly for me, and I thought this was an amazing film. I love the fact that it also has a 90 minute documentary on here as well that you can watch to find out more about the film and uh, deserved it. Next up is one of my DVD ones. When I first started buying Screen Factories, I bought some on DVD because sometimes. Here in Canada, well, here in Newfoundland, anyway, that's the only way you could find them. Other times, it was because I was a poor student. And other times, it was just because I really liked the artwork and I wanted a bigger artwork for it. And uh, Deadly Blessing is one of those that I really do want to buy the Blu-ray of down the road because I'm a big fan. Uh, I did not know I was going to be a, as big a fan of this movie as I was, but uh, this may be one of my top Wes Craven films. And I know that's saying something with Nightmare on Elm Street and all that stuff out there on screen. But I really dig this movie. I mean, it just got me in every way. I like the uh, the different aspects of it, kind of the, the Mormonist, like cult aspects, the uh, satanicness, the murder mystery part of it. Just so many different kind of weird combinations, and they all come together in a, in a really neat way. And that's the thing. It is. So, I love these movies that are kind of like a hodgepodge of different things, and they shouldn't work. And there's so much different stuff in there that you don't think it's going to work, but it works. And a lot of it has to do with the having such a great and gorgeous cast, by the way. So here, so you can see the girls on the back. And if you don't recognize them, uh, well, that's because early in their careers. And we got uh, Marin Jensen on here, who was in Battlestar Galactica, the original series. We have uh, Sharon Stone, uh, one of her early, early roles. And uh, we have Susan Buckner. And a lot of people don't remember Susan Buckner, but if you're a fan of Grease, well, she's Patty Simcox, um, but she kind of had her hair done back, and, you know, she was really chipper in that. She's not the chipper Patty Simcox in this one. Uh, we have Ernest Borgnine in this one here, and a, a role, I guess it's kind of similar to his, uh, in some ways, not really similar, but uh, if you're a sub Devil's Reign, you know, kind of, kind of get that there. Now, so I'm checking my phone here when I'm doing this, and I apologize for that. <clears throat> there is a also there's also a Mount Michael Berryman who does a great job in this one as well. A great film, and uh, there's another actress in here. My God, what's her name? I think it's Lisa Hartman. Yeah, Lisa Hartman's in this one as well. She's a gorgeous actress from the '80s. You once you see her, you won't know. It's like the first time you see Heather Locklear. I mean, it doesn't matter. You will always remember Heather Locklear after seeing Heather Locklear or Heather Thomas. Next up is Deadly Eyes. Uh, this one has Lisa Langolas in it. And because I like this movie, I really dug this movie, and Lisa Langolas is in it, and I got another movie that's got Lisa Langolas in it, although I really hate insects, uh, I'm going to buy The Nest. Actually, I eventually want all the Screen Factories. There's not a Screen Factory that I really don't want. Maybe Chilling Visions. Maybe I'm going to live, live, live that one, unless I get, like, it's up for a buck at a flea market or something like that. That would be a DVD buy. That would not be a, a Blu-ray buy. Uh, but uh, Deli Eyes just really did dig this film. Kind of fun. It's kind of really funny, kind of cheesy, very dark, man. Like uh, there's kind of a killer rap movie, and man, they don't, you know, it's not like oh we can't kill like people or kids and stuff. Oh no, At, no everybody's no everybody's fair game in Deli Eyes. It's Canadian can exploitation. Gotta love it. Killer rats. I'm down for that. Here's one I haven't watched yet. I uh, got this one on DVD, and it was the only way that I could find it. A movie called Dead Shadows. Uh, I saw the trailer to it. Originally, I didn't wasn't interested in this film. I don't know if it's any good. I really, I actually, um, but I did see the trailer to it, and I think it's set in France, in Paris. It's kind of apocalyptic style film. Uh, really different, really unusual, and I love the visual aspect, the visual style of it. So I had to pick it up. So, uh, Dead Shadows. Dead Shadows. Dead Shadows. Dead Shadows. Next up was. Dead Souls, and this one I'm kind of interested in. I haven't watched this one yet either. Um, I got a lot. Uh, this one stars, uh, yeah, stars Jesse James. Got a few different actors in it, and uh, I just kind of like it. It's kind of a chiller one, chiller TV one. I really want Monkey's Paw and Bonique. Those are the two that I really want. And and uh, I'll grab them down the road. They're cool ones. Uh, very cool stuff. Big fan of uh, this these type of films. I just want to see it. Let's see it. It's kind of like a a haunted house type of thing. So, uh, 
we got Bill Mosley in there, so that alone has me wanting to watch it because I'm a big Bill Mosley fan. Next up is an underrated one. Not a lot of people mention this one, and it's a shame because it's really, really good. And it's a uh, Death Valley. Death Valley is really cool and stars Peter Billingsley. I think this one has uh, Paul Lamatt and Stephen Hate McCaddy, right? Stephen McCaddy, yeah, because I always get them confused with. Um, with Lance Henriksen, honestly. Uh, Catherine Hicks is in this one. It's just a suspense film, basically. The kid knows there's a killer. The killer knows the kid knows. And uh, Chase ensues. Great little film. Death Valley. Really, really worth checking out. My favorite Scream Factory release of the, of the single releases is a movie called Dolls. It runs about 70 something minutes long. It's done by Charles Band. Fantastic film. Directed by Stuart Gordon, of course. Uh, Josna was pr produced, it, and I think Ban was executive producer. This was back in the Empire Picture Days. A uh, really, really good film. Very solid. This one I've watched many times. It's probably one of my most watched Screen Factories because I really love this film. Both my son and daughter also have this as one of their favorite films of all time, and because they get good taste from their dad. That's why. As far as killer doll movies goes, Pop Master is fun, but Dolls is way, way better. It's just such a fun film, and the transformation for the new Mr. Punch. Awesome. Oh boy. Here we go. Evil Speak. Yes, Stanley Cooper Smith. This may be the most hated kid in any movie ever. Uh, horror, science fiction, whatever. I don't think anybody was hated as much as poor Stanley Cooper Smith. Poor Clint Howard playing this character. Nobody likes him. His teachers doesn't like him. His friends, oh, his, the students, other students don't like him. The, he gets picked on like crazy. Nobody likes him. People like Carrie. In The Woodsman, Kevin Bacon plays a convicted pedophile that gets out of prison that's struggling with being normal. He's more liked than Stanley Cooper Smith. Nobody likes Stanley Fragging Cooper Smith. It's such a shame, but he gets his revenge. It's a Carrie type of film. It's actually very, very fun. Uh, I was worried at first because a good friend of mine, uh, Logan Toxic, he was not a fan of this film. Uh, but I watched it and I thought it was hilarious. I just thought it was really fun. Final Exam is another underrated one. Not a lot of people talk about this one, but it's really cool. I watched this one about like four or five times now. Uh, I'm a big slasher fan, so the slasher ones I get to watch more than other films. And these are the ones that I like to show my friends. Uh, I got some friends that are in that are into horror, so uh, basically uh, these are the type that I watch them. So Kelly, one of these days, if you're watching this video, you're going to watch this movie. Final exam. Uh, some may pass the test. God help the rest. It's a uh, it's a slasher film. It's neat and it's kind of cool in the fact that they don't waste any bullshit with like oh who's gonna who is it no this is the dude this is who it is he's gonna kill people uh run away run the hell away because if you don't he's gonna kill you that's it uh there's the cast was actually pretty good in this one the acting was better than i expected when i originally saw this film i actually was not the the biggest fan of the movie uh, back no not this one time but when i originally saw when i was when I was younger but i've been so used to i was kind of like programmed to liking the slashers that either wore a mask or basically you had to figure out who they were and I really love those mystery slasher ones. But Final Exam, I really liked it. I really dug this one. Final Terror. Another fun one. Uh, great little film. What an amazing cast. I mean, we've got Adrian Zmet in this one here. Uh, Daryl Hannah, of course, is in this one as well. Joe Pantaleone is in this. Uh, and... Uh, it's a Samuel Z. Arkoff production, and every time I hear that now, see, Arkoff was one of those guys who produced a lot of the low-budget horror and stuff back in the day, and like sci-fi, a lot of genre stuff. But every time I see it now, I used to, I own the movie, and it's one of my favorites. It's called Kentucky Fried Movie, and there's a a a, a, a kind of a, a fake trailer called Catholic High School Girls in Trouble, and he's like like Samuel Z. Blankowitz or something like that production, which is kind of a throw-up, kind of a play in the Arkoff. So every time I see his name now, I think Catholic High School Girls in Trouble. And that line comes to my head, and I cannot say it on my YouTube channel. I have the younger viewers, but even my better half over there will know the line that I'm talking about. She, she knows it, and she's shaking her head. So if you've ever seen Catholic High School Girls in Trouble, yes, 
you will you know this line from <laughs> Kathy Gosco Girls in Trouble. Anyway, Final Terror is a great little film. Uh, it was low or on the death count. I think uh, Todd mentioned this as well that they added in some deaths at the beginning of the film to kind of give a, of a higher death count. I think this one like lingered in like uh, in post production afterwards. It was a while before it came out, but um, and it did. I think Daryl Hannah from when she did Splash was actually one of the reasons this one came out. Probably Adrian Zemad was doing like T.J. Hooker at times as well. But a uh, great little film. John Carpenter's The Fog. One of my favorite ghost stories of all time. Uh, it's just, I just really like this. Uh, John Carpenter himself underrates this film, I think. And the, and the way this is done. John Houseman is the kind of is in the opening of this one here. We've got a great cast, Jamie Curtis. We've got Adrian Barbeau. Adrian Barbeau is another one of those girls where I was like, bum, 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 bum. Only reason I watched Mod. I hated that show. But I watched it because Adrian Barbeau had scenes in it. And this was back before in the days when you actually had to sit down and watch the show and couldn't fast forward to it. Then later on I got to like tape it. And I, I, yes, I know Mod is a funny show and a lot of people like it and B. Arthur is funny and all that. I didn't care. I really didn't. I was like a teenager. All I wanted to see was Adrian Barbeau. And uh, to this day, she still makes my heart skip a beat. Um, great cast in there. we got uh, Janet Lee in this one here as well. Hal Holbrook does a great job in this film. Of course, we have the man without his stash though. We have him. The great, the one and only Tom Atkins. The guy. He will drink his way through a film, any film, and just, he's, he's cool. He's just cool in whatever he does. Anyway, it's a cool little film, John Carpenter film. It's it was done after Halloween. It's very different. And basically, this is a ghost story of this town. I think it's Bodega, not Bodega Bay, oh God, I think, I think in Puppetmaster. Anyway, somewhere in New England. Killer pirates type of thing it's uh really cool really better than i could describe right there just it's really fun and adrian barbeau's in it did i say that i did didn't i yeah i know i did just just go in there just saying it one more time it was a kind of an awkward film though uh kind of a backstory thing basically john carpenter was married at the time i guess married we were dating at least deborah hill who we had made a, a earlier films of the song precinct 13 halloween to kind of pen that one together she did a lot of the uh a lot, of, a lot of the dialogue stuff for the film. She was really an integral part of John Carpenter's work. Unfortunately, around this time, he had started dating Adrian Barbeau. So Jamie Lee Curtis was coming back into the set, and all of a sudden, these two people that she started like making movies with uh, were no longer like together. They weren't a couple, a cohesive unit, and there was kind of like some friction on the set. So uh, it was interesting. H.P. Lovecraft's From Beyond, amazing film with Jeffrey Films. Basically, we've got Doctor Pretorius, Mad Scientist. He opens up this this world so that there's all these things that are flying around us all these kind of like creatures because this is Lovecraftian and monsters and horrible horrible things that we should not know exist and we're perfectly fine not knowing they exist because they can't touch us we can't touch them never the twain shall meet unfortunately he decides to make a machine that's gonna flick that switch and what it does you just gotta see yeah some Pandora's boxes are not meant to be open this this is one of them. Jeffrey Coombs does a great job in this film. So does Barbara Crampton. Like I mentioned before, Barbara Crampton and a leather dominatrix outfit. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I'm really, really reliving my teenage puberty years as I go through these films. Because these are my teenage puberty movies. So, indulge me. Uh, From Beyond is a great film. It's kind of a supernatural aspect. Uh, did you watch this one? Yeah, that was a good, that was a good one. Ken Foray's in, actually, from uh, Down the Dead. He does a... <laughs> in his underwear scene, is just hilarious. Uh, just saying. Nothing about Ken, nothing wrong with Ken Foray's underwear. Just just saying. It was, it was funny. Uh, Funhouse. This is by Tobe Hooper. Uh, a very cool film. William Finley is actually in this one here. I'm a really big fan of William Finley. He did Phantom of the Paradise. And, of course, he was in Sisters as well with uh, from Brian De Palma. Uh, he's a kind of a quirky actor, um, tall, scrawny, gangly type of guy. Uh, was great, great actor. Very, very good character actor. Uh, this movie here is just, I think it's one, it's one of Tobe Hooper's best. My favorite Tobe Hooper movie, aside from Texas Chainsaw, which, you know, it's just a fantastic movie. It goes beyond. You can't just put that in your favorite movie of his because it's just beyond that. It's, it's another level of film. But it is Eaten Alive. Eaten Alive is one I, that I really enjoy. But, um... Funhouse, I really do love this movie. It's a fun little slasher movie. It's got some great effects in here. A uh, solid story, and it just—it's one night 
I uh, love the Frankenstein references. They're all over the place. You, you can kind of make a game looking for all the Frankenstein references in this movie. Um, some very cool stuff. Next up is the Canadian werewolf film that is amazing. Ginger Snaps. This is one of the screen factories that if you collect any screen factories at all, this should be in your collection. It stars Emily Perkins, Catherine Isabel, and yes, I know, everybody here that watches horror, if you're a guy, Catherine Isabel is someone that you've drooled over over the years. She's American Mary. She's Ginger. She's been in a bunch of these movies. Hey, she was even in an episode of Smallville. Thought she was in a coma for most of it. Yeah, remember that one? Hmm, go back there. Ginger Snap's got fantastic werewolf effects. It's a great film. And it's a, it's done by a, I think it's written by a, a female. Was it written by a female? It's got a really strong female aspect to it. And it's so well done. It's just beyond like uh, what you would expect coming out of one of these films. It, very literate, very smart. Uh, effects are great. Uh, fast moving, just an amazing film. And uh, um, for me, Ari, this is this is a classic. This is up there with the American Warrior from London, this is with the Howlings. This is a classic. Next up is a big one, and it is the complete Halloween series box set. This is all the films. It, is, it has Halloween, Halloween 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, H2O Halloween Resurrection, Rob Zombie's Halloween, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, or RZ2, I guess you want to call it. Uh, this has all the like big editions. Basically what they did, was they got all the companies together, Anchor Bay and Screen Factory and all of them. Screen Factory and Anchor Bay co-produced this hero set. One of the big things about it was that Part 6, the producer's cut, had never been out before on DVD or anything. The only thing you could get was like this theatrical edition was crappy version of Part 6. So finally they put out Part 6 and uh, they put it the, on Blu-ray and they put out the, the, the uh, producer's cut, the better cut as well. And to say they gave it a lot of attention is to, basically to underrate that because, uh, see that? Those are the special features for Part 6 alone. Part 6 has the most special features. I've got audio commentaries, Jamie's story, The Cursed Curse, uh, Acting Scared, Shape of Things, New Haddonfield's Horrors, Full Circle, Cast Crew, Tribute to Donald Pleasance, Archive Interviews, Band Scenes Footage, Band Scenes Footage, Alternate and de Deleted Scenes, Teaser Trailer for its original total, Halloween 666, Origins of Michael Marsh, Death Trailer, TV Spot Stills, Girl. it's amazing amount of stuff. Just amazingly great stuff. It has an actual bonus disc on here as well. The only reason you're going to want to take out uh, this movie here, Halloween 2, is to watch the bonus disc that comes with it. Uh, it's cool. It's got a really neat little... Uh, and it has these awesome like black covers. I won't take them all out, but it comes with the original artwork. I just grabbed like three at random. And uh, so you got Halloween, Halloween 2, Halloween 3 with the original, po the original poster with these black cases. Black cases are sexy as all. So hell. I love them. I love the black cases. Maybe I'll put these back in there. I'll fit it over. So I can actually keep them there. Next up are the very first two things that that Anchor Bay, eh, Anchor Bay, that Scream Factory ever put out. Halloween, Halloween, blah, 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 new tongue. Halloween 2. That's it. Then we got it right, didn't we? Thanks. I'm a big boy. Uh, <laughs> it's a good film. Uh, done in a hot, set in a hospital. Just love this the way this one's done. I love Michael Myers. I love these films. This one here, up the gore a lot. Uh, basically, uh, Rick Rosenthal directed it. John Carpenter had seen Friday the 13th. He said, this isn't going to play for an audience. After watching Friday the 13th, he went back. He shot, put in some extra scenes, some more gore, some more nudity and stuff like that. Kind of amped it up a bit. Rick Rosenthal wanted to keep in the suspense thing. and But, uh, I think Carpenter was right. It was just it was a different era. It was another time. Uh, Hall Halloween three, Season of the Witch, and it really probably should have been just called Season of the Witch because this is actually a really good film. But a lot of people don't give it credit because it is not with Michael Myers. Michael Myers is in it. It actually is as a film. They're watching ha Halloween in the bar during one scene. You, you'll see that actually for a second. They actually get him to change the channel. Basically, what John Carpenter wanted to do was take that the Halloween moniker and make a different film with a different uh, idea and plot for each one. Like Michael Myers' stories was one and two. That was going to be it. That was going to be his story. And uh, he wanted to say, hey, this one, if it would have been successful, they would have kept on making other films like that. 
he'd produce some, he'd direct some. He didn't direct this one. He actually, I think it was uh, Tommy Wallace who directed uh, part three. Uh, it's a really fun film. Again, it's got the man, Tom Atkins, and yes, he's got the stash. He's got the Tom Atkins mustache. So just awesome stuff. I love this film. Really cool, really different, really weird. And uh, that Silver Shamrock song freaked me out. It really did when I was a kid. I mean, I would have to change the channel. That stupid damn song came on. It would freak me out, and I'd go to bed, and I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I'm really just sleep now." And then that song would hit my head, you know, like you know, five more days to Halloween, that type of thing. And bam, you know what? Aaron was awake for two more hours before I went to sleep. Thank you, thank you for that, John Carpenter. Uh, the horror story originally titled House Three. Yes, House Three. Um, not originally titled. It was titled House Three across the uh, across the way in Europe, and that. So when House Four was when the next House movie was made. It was, Look, went right to House 4. A great little movie. This is really fun. Uh, the over tied up the... It's really... It gets the happy ending that most horror movies don't get. Uh, really cool one. Uh, James Isaac did this one. Uh, written by Helen Smithy. That's, you know... So you know exactly kind of what went behind the scenes there. But uh, Lance Henderson and Brian James. Brian James really commits to the role here and uh, of Max Jenkin. And he does a great job with it. Uh, his... Just this mountain of a guy, Brian James is, really brings this killer to life. He's got this kind of like cool little kind of laugh thing that uh, is kind of creepy. He's, he has his like, he's got it on path. You know he wants to make this a franchise character. He wants to make this his character. And he does such a good job. It's such a shame that this didn't go any farther because this was a really good movie. Next up is The Howling. And I'm very excited about The Howling 2 coming out. I've actually got a pre-order from Amazon. Um... Again, this one here I got the day I was going to Morocco. And I just did not want to wait. I wanted this movie. I wanted it in my collection. I wanted to have it for the exact day. When I came back from Morocco, I knew I wanted to watch this movie right away. I actually watched the feature from it on the day we were going to leave because I just couldn't wait to see it. There's a feature on this one where they talk to the producer of the film. And I watch this every once in a while. I really love this feature. And he doesn't just talk about the Howling. He talks about absolutely every single Howling movie that was made because he produced them all. And he, it's just incredible, incredible stuff. The Howling, great, great, great film. Love this movie. Love the features on it. Uh, Dee Wallace is gorgeous. And what was her name? Oh, my God. I think it's Blinda Blasky. Uh, and she is beautiful. And the scene where she seduces the husband and they make love outside. Uh, yeah. Teenage Aaron comes out again. It was a great scene. And... Uh, a great film. Just such a great cast for that movie. If you haven't seen The Howling, please, please see The Howling. It's a really great werewolf film. Lake Placid. Sadson Theater. I didn't think I was going to like it. I really did. Uh, Betty White, actually, is the uh, what I really enjoyed about this film. There's Bill Pullman. I was a real big fan of Bridget Fonda. Oliver Platt was in this movie. Oliver Platt was kind of like, looked like he was going to have a big, big career back then. He's done a few things, that, but uh, I guess the movie's like uh, Ready to Rumble, kind of like stalled his career but he's a good actor um but betty white does a great job in this this is one of those like killer alligator crocodile is it alligator crocodile crocodile yeah crocodile movies and um uh, it's fun it's really fun it's funny and it's there's a lot of humor in this one this it's hard to believe that this is written by the guy that did ally mcbeal but it really is and uh david e. kelly and i just really did i really dug the film i didn't think i'd like it i loved it as far as the haunted stories go there is Legend of Hell House. Really fun. Ryder McDowell. Uh, Pamela Franklin's in this, right? Yeah, Pamela Franklin. Just a really great film. If you've never seen Le Legend of Hell House, check it out. Uh, Clive Ravel is in this too, and he's a really good uh, British actor. Another one of the newer ones, Leviathan. I was a big fan of those like underwater movies. Abyss is actually the one I like least out of all of them, just to be honest with you. Deep Star 6 I love. I would love to see that one on there. I come out for Screen Factory. And Leviathan was the other one. I love Leviathan. Uh, Leviathan and Deep Star 6 were two that were just like neck to neck. And like Abyss was just down a little bit farther. I'm not sure why. But I just like the uh, the acting. The cat's better in this one here. Uh, we, and, it's, and it's a great cast. I mean, we got Peter Weller, Richard Crenna, Amanda Pays, Daniel Stern, Ernie Hudson. We've got um, Hector Elizondo. It's just an amazing cast. Such a great film. Uh, if you've never seen Leviathan, it's really one to really revisit it. Because it, it is a really fun film. Next up is Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions. Um, 
underrated film. This is one you watched, didn't it? Did you watch Little Religions? Yeah. This one has uh, the guy from, uh, well, I guess he's from that NCIS show now, but I, I would say if you know this guy, please know him from Quantum Leap or at least Enterprise because, uh, you know, I really do like Scott Bakula. Great actor. Uh, I did a lot of stage. I think his family were like stage actors, a lot of musicals and stuff like that. I remember there was a, a documentary that uh, William Shatner did. And he was going around talking to all the captains of all the uh, Star Trek shows. And uh, the one that he gushed when he spoke to was Scott Bakula because he was like in awe of the uh, stage work and the musical work that Scott Bakula had done because that's one of the things that he'd been known for. And William Shatner was, uh, was a little starstruck when talking to him over that, which is really kind of cool to see Shatner. It's not something you normally see with Shatner. I mean, I've met Shatner. Um, but it's really cool. Shatner's a really nice guy, by the way. He is Shannon. <clears throat> uh, Lord of Illusions. I really did like this movie. I thought it was fun. I thought, you know, there was definitely wasn't the best Clyde Barker movie. But uh, I enjoyed it. I thought that it should have had a follow-up. It never did. And uh, I would love to see a follow-up to that. Done by Clyde Barker with Scott Becker. The late, my latest edition, and sexy as all hell, is Mad Max. I love this movie. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this one. Maximum Force of the Future. Oh, this is one of the ones that uh, I'll sit down and I will watch and I will watch and I will watch because I'm a huge fan. It's, it's a brutal movie. Now, George Miller did this one. And remember that this is not like the other Mad Max films. Uh, I would sit down and watch Road Warrior with my with him like any day. This one, this is one I'll watch with, with friends because there are some brutal scenes in the film. Uh, there's this, the scene that with the uh, name. Oh, what's his name again? The killer's name this one. Like the main killer guy. Like Toe Crusher or something like that? Yeah, this is a really weird name. Uh, but uh, what happens to this wife and son? It was so well done. But it was so brutal and so hard to watch. And I loved it. I love revenge films. This is not at all like any of the other Mad Max films. If you had just seen Road Warrior, if you just seen Thunderdome, if you've just gone out and seen Fury Road... And you're going to go and watch this one. You think this is going to be like Fury Road? Not at all. Go watch Road Warrior. That's like Fury Road. That's going to be like Fury Road. That's going to have this dystopian future. Going to have these really whacked out like bad guys and stuff like that. Mad Max doesn't. It has a biker gang, a really brutal, violent biker gang. It has some awesome cars in it um, and stuff. It, but it doesn't go to the extent that Road Warrior or uh, Beyond Thunderdome would go to like really bring that dystopian type of future into the film. This is, by far and large... A violent revenge film, and it is a really well done one. Next up is Motel Hell, going on a kind of totally different thing. It's a kind of this is a kind of a horror comedy. Uh, we got a horror Calhoun in this one here. Um, what's his name? Wolfman Jack has actually got a role in this one as well. Uh, many of you viewers will probably be too young to remember who Wolfman Jack is. But for you that aren't, you know that he was the voice, the radio voice that a lot of us knew. Uh, you know, long ago you knew Casey Kasem, but you knew Wolfman Jack. You knew that like harsh, growly type of voice that Wolfman had, and uh, he was just one of those cool guys back in the day. Motel Hell, fun, fun for little film. Takes, says, yeah, it takes all kinds of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters, and uh, if you know what that means, enjoy it. Farmer Vincent fritters, filled with salt and green. Monkey shines. Another Ramiro one. They did they brought this one and Dark Half at the same time. My cousin actually gave me these um, for my birthday. And just incredible stuff. I did love this one here. Jason Beggy from uh, Chicago PD is in this. He, you know, he always plays badass in that. This is a very different role for him. Uh, Chicago Fire? Okay, Chicago Fire. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's in Chicago PD now, but I'm not sure. You can let me know. You guys watch these shows? I watched Law & Order SVU. And they did a little crossover. And uh, I'm sure it was Chicago PD. Maybe there's a show, maybe that before the Chicago Fire, but uh, I'm going to say Chicago PD, even though it says on the back Chicago Fire, because that's what I'm going for. Oh, there's a Chicago PD. There's like, yeah, there is. Like, this, this crossover show that On Order does. They don't do it with Chicago Fire. They have, like, there's this, like, Chicago police station. And he's, like, a badass, basically. On Order SVU does it by the book, and they go to him, and he basically says, you know, give me five minutes in the room. Give me five minutes in the room with them all. I'll make him talk. It's like, no, you got to do it by the book. He's like, no. Okay. New Year's Evil. 
Evil. I, I just, I haven't watched this one yet. I gotta watch this one. Uh, it's such a fun film. Um, this is one that I'll watch with my friends because, yeah. Don't dare make New Year's resolutions unless you plan to live. It is a slasher movie. It is a mystery. You will, there'll be no mystery if you figure out who the killer is, but anyway, here it is, New Year's Evil. Great stuff. Next up is Nightbreed, the director's cut. Um, pick this one up. I love the uh, slipcase to this one here. The original Nightbreed on the inside as well. I'm a really big fan of this movie. A really, really big fan. I love the Nightbreed one. I grabbed this one up when I thought I wasn't going to be able to get the uh, other edition. And uh, just a great, great film. My good friend Parson Berger actually gave me for my birthday Nightbreed. The uh, div Basically, the Director's Cut Limited Edition. It has the Director's Cut and the Theatrical Cut. It's got a book inside, amazing features, just incredible. And uh, I couldn't bear to get rid of either one of those Nightbreeds. It's just really good. Next up, when you think about like uh, 80s and like these type of films, Night of the Comet really comes to mind. It's just a fun film. Like one of those, like, uh, I guess end of the world zombie apocalypse type films but it's, it's fun it's cheesy it's very there's a valley girl aspect to it uh it's a really fun film i mean mary warnoff is in it, so you know it's gonna be kind of a quirky culty college type of film if you know mary warnoff is uh catherine mary stewart's in this one here um just a great cast sharon Fer farrell is in this uh jeffrey lewis wow okay so check out the comment this is one that had the most commentaries thinking of all this is like uh, three i think three commentaries Next up is another favorite, Night of the Demons. Love this film. And uh, this is kind of, like I said before, this is a litmus test. I, this is one of the movies that I'll show my friends. And if you like Night of the Demons, I know they're cool. And then I'll say, you know, this is a really bad movie. But but no, I really love Night of the Demons. It's really fun. Uh, Lenny Quigley. Uh, we've got Kathy Powell from uh, Dallas. Yeah, in the last couple of seasons she was in it. And uh, just a really great cast. And of course, Mimi Kincaid, who was the, uh, was it the niece of uh, Rue McClanahan from uh, Golden Girls. Ninja 3, The Domination. Oh, it takes a ninja to kill a ninja. Oh. Yeah, it's a fun film. It, ha it has like their go-to girl of the time, uh, Lucinda Dickey, and she was in like uh, the break-in movies. Uh, she's in this one as well. She's an aerobics instructor. In order to show that a female could be a ninja, because, you know, heaven forbid a female be a ninja, she basically what happens is there's a bad ninja, there's an evil ninja, and he kind of dies, but he doesn't. He possesses the body of an aerobics instructor played by Lucinda Dickey. So Lucinda Dickey has to go to another ninja, Shokazuji, who she's in order to get the bad ninja out of her. Uh, it's fun. Aerobics instructor ninja. Just, just saying. Of course, Nasratu the Vampire. This is the remake of uh, the original Nasratu film. It's uh, done by Werner Horsag. And uh, it's the stars Klaus Kinski, Isabella Gianni, and Bruno Gans. It is an amazingly beautiful film. It is a slower moving film, but it is gorgeous. It is a movie that Werner Horzog was meant to make. It is beautiful. It is utterly, breathtakingly, stunningly well done. And um, Klaus Kinski was born to play this type of role. He does. He embodies Nasratu. He is perfect. Uh, if anybody had to take over from Max Shrek, it was him. And the only other time I've seen this done as well was William Dafoe in the, uh, kind of the whole, like, remake thing of it. So, so I'm putting this down. Oh. No, we're not done. Next up is another favorite film of mine of a favorite franchise that I'm really worried about because the fifth film doesn't have the director doing it. It is Phantasm 2. I uh, got some great stuff on this one. If you've seen the Phantasm movies, then all you have to hear, see is Angus scream and hear the word, boy. And you know just what you're getting in for. Uh, giant balls of like death that come after you. Little creatures uh, being taken to the other side. Basically, it's like uh, he said in the movie, uh, he said, you think when you die, you go to heaven. You don't. You come to me. Uh, it's really, really a cool film. Uh, they recasted the uh, the kid for uh, James LaGrosse. And James LaGrosse is a, a really good actor. Does a really great job in the film. And some people swear by him more than do the original actor. 
Um, I go back and forth on that one. But I really do love this film. John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness, another favorite of mine. Uh, I love John Carpenter films. I really do. I think he's a really great director. Um, this is kind of those uh, basically evil. It's They find evil in a church. And it's... Uh, it's a great film. It has some great jump scares. Alice Cooper's in this one here. Uh, of course, Donald Pleasance. You definitely got to check this one out. It's a really, really good one. Prison is an underrated film. It has an actual early role for Viva Mortensen, who you guys probably know from things like Lord of the Rings and, you know, little things he did like that. But Viva Mortensen's best role here is Prison. His prison. Uh, I really did like this movie. Um, it's fun. It's directed by Randy Harlan, so you know it's going to be kind of like uh, going to have a lot of like effects and stuff in it. Harlan was like one of those like directors that did a lot of that type of stuff. Um, there's special effects in here, like the stunt work was Kane Hodder, who of course who played Jason in Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven, basically the X. And uh, I really did love this. And the late Lane Smith from, uh, of course, Lois and Clark, New Adventure Superman, is in this as well. And uh, you're Miss Lane. Next two are. Psycho 2 and Psycho 3. These are also big watches on my list. They don't have a lot of features on them, but they do have really awesome commentaries. These are both fantastic films. Commentaries on these are great. And these are the ones that I think I've watched, listened to the commentaries of the most. Um, it's got a commentary with Tom Hall on the one. got a commentary with uh, Charles Edward Pogue on the other. Just uh, two, the screenwriters for both of these films. I really do love both these films. I think they did a great job. Definitely much better than the, we're doing base. I haven't even bothered to watch the last season of the base with all. So peeved with the season two, but uh, I do still have these films. Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead's a classic. It was a time there were no monster movies being made. We just didn't have any monsters anymore. We had slashers, we had killers, we had psychotics, but we had no monsters. And Stan Winston took it upon himself to give us a monster, give us another legend, give us another someone that you could sit down around the fire. Pl fire. Uh, in a, at, at, when you're camping and just like talk about it. And Pumpkinhead was just this amazing looking creature. If you've never seen this movie, you really, really should. Well, my friend is uh, Sheldon is not a very big fan of this one. I'm a huge fan of this movie and uh, so is my better half. Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings. It's cool. It's got a, it's more of a, a funnier one. It's got Lenny Quigley in it, Stephen, Can Stephen Canal, if you're a Dallas fan. Uh, Amy Dolan's uh, Andrew Robinson. It has a big cast. Roger Clinton, the brother of, of uh, George Clinton, president, is in this one here. Uh, did I say George Clinton? I know. I just like put two presidents together. You realize that, don't you? Yes. Huh. Yes. If this has been a long video, by the way, guys. This is at 57 minutes. So I just somehow I amalgamated uh, George Bush and Bill Clinton. Uh, I just made them into one, which is a really horrifying thing, because I'm a fan of uh, Clinton as a president, and I'm not a fan of George Bush, but he's hilarious. Um, she doesn't like Clinton. She really, she does not appreciate his saxophone playing. Uh, but Pumpkin It 2 is a great one. Uh, Blood Wings, really fun film. Uh, very cheesy. Cue the Winged Serpent. I like everything that Larry Cohen does. And uh, this one here I really, really love. It's, again, it's another cool monster movie. Uh, we've got Marco Moriarty, and Marco Moriarty is just amazing. He's an amazing actor. He's one of those actors I think that could have been bigger. He wanted to stay in Canada, uh, but uh, he just does great, great stuff. So, cue the winged serpent. We gotta love it. Sleepaway Camp. This one I, I can't give away because. Uh, one of my friends might be watching. If she can sit through this whole video, uh, this is the one that I keep saying that I'm going to show my friend. Because I think everybody needs to see Sleepaway Camp and its ending. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this film. The kills in this are really good. The ending, is, as we all know, is really good. So uh, it's one of those that, uh, that has to be watched. So uh, she's seen it. She's not as big a fan of the Sleepaway Camp series as I am. At least the first one. I don't know if she saw the other ones after watching this one. Yes, uh, I did. I made her watch her all. Did I make you watch all? Yes, you did. Yeah, I did. They're really good. Except for Return to Sleepaway Camp. It's a really bad film. I'm really sorry. Did I make you watch that one? Yes. I'm sorry. 
Adeline in Return to Sleepy Camp is one of the worst characters you're ever going to see. I think he may be up there on the hated list. No, I think no, I think um, as as hated as as Alan was, I think a one or two people actually liked Alan, not the audience. The audience hated him, but, so he's even more liked than Stanley Cooper Smith. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, so Kelly, if you're watching this, this is the one we're watching. Sleepaway Camp. This is really cool. It's got that ending that uh, you'll never forget. You will never forget the ending of Sleepaway Camp. Just saying, it's really different. Don't you think so? Yeah, you guys know. Uh, Swamp Thing. I uh, love this movie. Very cheesy. Uh, of course, Swamp Thing 2 came out with Heather Locklear. But this one, it's Adrian Barbeau. You knew I was going to get it. You knew I was going to go with Adrian Barbeau on the cover. Unfortunately, this does not have the European cut. The European cut is now not allowed to be shown. And the European cut had a, uh, a topless scene with Adrian Barbeau. But this is not in this one. But it is a great presentation of the film. Some great special features. I uh, love the Swamp Thing. love the comic. Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror. I've talked about this one a lot so recently, so I'm not going to go into it much. It's a great anthology film. Get it. Just get it. It's really good. Get it. You've got it yet? Okay, go get it. Oh, wait. Okay, now that you're back and you've got this in your hand, it's an amazing film. Pick it up. Terror Train is another one that everybody should see. Terror Train is such a fun slasher film. Just so well done. Uh, you got Ben Johnson, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, David Copperfield. Uh, the twist on this one's amazing. Uh, I think even, even you like the twist on this one. Terror Train has a really good twist. The killer doesn't just have one outfit. He goes from different outfit, different outfit. Everybody's on the train. They're, they're all, it's a masquerade, kind of like ball type of thing. And uh, the killer, you kind of know who the killer is from the beginning of the film. But you don't know where the killer is, or it's just the twist. The last twist is really, really good. Some people say they figured it out. And I really find it hard. Did you figure it out? Uh, see, it's really hard to figure the twist on that one. That's a really good twist. I know some people are going to say they figured it out. Uh, maybe you did, but I don't know. Terror Vision, really fun film, really cheesy science fictiony horror film, very funny. Uh, Video Dead is a movie that was made. Uh, it's a fun film. A video that is a fun film, but it was definitely made for the cover. It was one of those where we said, we'll put this cover out there, somebody will rent it. They Live, one of the great action sci-fi films of all time. Roddy Piper, one of the greatest and longest fight sequences ever in film is in They Live, and I just love it. I love this movie. The Town that Dreaded Sundown. It's a really fun film by Charles B. Pierce, but Charles B. Pierce had did another movie that I actually like better than The Town that Dreaded Sundown, and it's called The Evictors, and it is also on this. This is actually a double feature. Really great stuff. We are down to the final five. Whew. Vampire Lovers. The only Hammer one that uh, they put out. Uh, Peter Cushing's in this one. Ingrid Pitt looking utterly gorgeous. And, you know, love this movie. I love vampire films. And I love Hammer vampire films. They got the kind of a cool gothic sense to them. And uh, this is one of my favorites. It's got the uh, kind of like the Carmilla, the lesbian vampire things going on. And uh, really, really well done. Madeline Smith is absolutely stunning this film. Just a really good one. Kate O'Mara, uh, who's now, she's passed on. She was in Doctor Who. She played the Ronnie. Uh, she's in this one as well. And I, I love Kate O'Mara. Rest in peace. Uh, you're missed. Uh, vampire Lovers is a great one. This one I, it was the cheapest one I bought. I think I paid 10 bucks for this one. Yeah, definitely pick it up. As they start to fall over. Vincent Price Collection, uh, Volume 1. It has Pit and Pendulum, Mask of the Red Death, Haunted Palace, Fall of the, of the House of Usher, The Bomba Doctor Fives, The Witchfinder General. Big fan, love these movies, love Vincent Price, great features on here. I think they did a much better job of putting this one together than they did the second one. That's just my opinion. I like this one way more than the second one. I, I actually bypassed the second edition of this one to get the. Uh, the one that's, that Arrow put out, which is an amazing one, by the way. Great, great stuff. Witchboard, another one that I really love. Uh, it was, again, like every other person that saw White Snake video when they were like a teenager loved Tana Katane with the glowing the mane of red hair that she's got there. Leggy, beautiful redhead, Tana Katane. Okay, I just need a moment to myself. Uh, it's got uh, Todd Allen, Steve Nichols, of course, we know from, uh, well, not everybody, but if you watch Days of Our Lives, he used to play uh, Steve Patch Johnson, who I was very uh, inspired by. I like 
his acting a lot. Uh, wasn't a lot of when I was growing up, a lot of the actors that I saw on TV and films were like uh, were were dark haired guys and they're tall and they were like good looking. And uh, I was blonde and uh, not extraordinarily tall either. But guys like uh, Steve Nichols made me say, okay, look, there are blonde actors out there. So, uh, Witchboard's really, really good movie, really fun, much, much better. You know, the movie came out recently, Ouija. This here is way, this is 10, 15 times better than Ouija. Without warning, another one that I love, those waiting for this to come out for a long time. Great film by Graydon Clark. Very fun. Uh, great cast. Just check it out. Last but not least, X Ray and Schizoid. X Ray, I, I watched a million times because I, again, young Aaron loved Barbie Benton as everybody who grew up around that time period did love Barry Benton. Is this a good movie? Yes, it is. It's so good. It's so bad, it's good. The acting in it is really not the best. There is a scene in it where, it's, in order to get nudity from Barbie Benton, she's examined on, on the operating table. And it is the most awkward, unappealing examination you're ever going to see. I mean, Barbie Benton is a beautiful woman. And her naked is is definitely a thing of beauty. However, the way that they do it is just awkward and not sexy. Uh, you've got a very sexy actress in her. Don't give us like some clinical. Uh, it's just really weird. But it's it's a fun movie. Lots a lot of cool kills. The villain is so over the top. It's hilarious. It is a, this killer is hilarious. Uh, Skit size another one. That's like it's fantastic. Klaus Kinski is in this. Marianne Hill is in this one. Uh, we've got. Oh, man, Donna Wilkes, Craig Watson, Christopher Lloyd from Back to the Future. Uh, but the killer, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because it was on a VHS or originally. But the Blu-ray, the killer's face shown in the window at the beginning of the movie. And then they pretend that it's a, uh, it's, it's a basically a suit on it, but it's not. Anyway, there we go. All my screen factories. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. One of my longest videos that I've done recently. Have fun. Collect Scream Factories. I got From a Whisper to a Scream on the way. I've got some pre-ordered. I've got Sleepaway Camps pre-ordered and a few others. And uh, there's some more that I want because Scream Factory just puts so much good stuff. Go get yourself some Scream Factory. It's a great, great company. It has some of the best videos, uh, Blu-rays that are out there right now. They just do amazing stuff. Thanks for watching. For me right now, it's time for tea. Say hello to the Pin Lord and the Scout. It's friend the Phantom. But i got to go reheat my tea. It's been uh, 67 minutes. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.